jazz. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this, this music you are hearing is true hot jazz. And unless a demand is made for its revival, it may well be the last you will hear of real, honest-to-goodness jazz. For here assembled on the stage of the Geary Theater of San Francisco are eight Negro musicians, America's last practitioners of this off-counterfeited and little-known American folk music jazz. Brought to San Francisco for this unique concert are such artists as Bunk Johnson, 63-year-old daddy of all New Orleans trumpeters, an educator of Louis Armstrong, Papa Mutt Carey, equally famous New Orleans trumpeter, Edward Kid Ory, the greatest tailgate trombonist that ever lived, Bertha Gonsolin of piano fame, who studied with the great Jelly Roll Morton, Wade Whaley, Buster Wilson, Frank Paisley, Edward Garland, and Everett Walsh, all famous for their performance of the original American hot jazz. These are here for what may be a final concert of real jazz under the auspices of the San Francisco Museum of Art, the only museum in the West devoted exclusively to modern art. This is jazz. Does the name Bunk Johnson mean anything to you? Have you ever heard of Wade Whaley? What do you know about Bertha Gonsolin? Nothing, perhaps, but those are names which cornerstone hot jazz. Now, I can't tell you about jazz. It's a little before my time. But uh, here is a musician educated in that field. The Blue Network's Clancy Hayes to speak for it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an impossible job to crowd jazz into a half hour, especially when we have here in San Francisco eight of its original exponents. And I know you want to hear more of this real jazz music. So let me tell you first just a little bit about how jazz originated. It originated here in the United States in the city of New Orleans. As Bunk says, in the dear old city of New Orleans. And it was undoubtedly an outgrowth of the pagan, rhythmic music of the African Negro. Budding in the Negro colony in New Orleans, it steamed up the Mississippi on the romantic old river boats, and by the teen years of the 20th century, had enveloped the nation. This first number by our jazz concert group is one that almost everyone will recognize. It's a slow drag called Basin Street Blues. Kick it off there, will you, man? This is jazz. <laughs> Thank you. 
The word jazz was as criminally corrupted as the music itself. Originally, it was the rhythmic and unwritten music of the American Negro imported from his native Africa and developed in the brass bands of old New Orleans parades. By 1920, it became the title of an era. Teenage youth. They're caught in the spirit of that African rhythm. They went berserk. Heavy-browed oldsters decried them as delinquents and blamed jazz. Ministers denounced jazz from their pulpits. Arty musicians and critics belittled the tide they couldn't stop. Then came those who commercialized upon this new movement. Chief among these was Paul Whiteman, who was ingeniously crowned by the unknowing as the king of jazz. But his music and his copiers were far from the true Negro jazz. The inspired, improvised, rhythmic music which formed the race's spirituals and such two-beat music as Muskrat Ramble, which, by the way, due to a typographical error on the label of its first recording by Louis Armstrong and his Hot Five, was announced as Muscat Ramble, and is still known by that title. Incidentally, its composer, Edward Kid Ory, is the trombone man to be heard on this concert. Here it is, folks. The Muskrat Ramble. This is jazz. <laughs> Today's concert from the stage of the Geary Theater in San Francisco is a monument to America's most unique folk music, originated by the rhythm-minded Negroes of New Orleans and borrowed from their African homeland. This program, This Is Jazz, is jazz in the raw. Jazz in its original, jazz before Carnegie Hall. Jazz as it was adapted from Africa and ascended up the Mississippi from New Orleans. Jazz as it was first played a half a century ago, and as it may never be played again unless... You listeners demand it. From a dozen states west of the Mississippi, the San Francisco Museum of Art has gathered this small, ageless group of surviving jazz players to bring you this concert. And probably never again will all of these original exponents of true American jazz be grouped for a recital of America's original jazz. Suppose you were asked to write the rise and fall of the Roman Empire in 20 words or less. Well, a half hour just isn't enough time, that's all. But this next three minutes of high society, one of the most famous New Orleans parade tunes, will give you something of an idea of jazz. Thank you. 
one of the West's most noted interior designers, Rudy Blake, author of a series of lectures on jazz sponsored by the museum. Between him and Douglas McKeggie, curator of the museum, came this strange idea. Let's peel off all the layers of counterfeit jazz and expose the core. True Negro jazz. I give you Rudy Blake. Thank you, Clancy Hayes. If I sound excited, well, I am excited, and it's not merely because real jazz is an exciting music, and that would be reason enough, but also because, to me, this is a dream coming true. There were many doubters who said there are no longer players for such a band, and even if they can be assembled, they can't play real jazz anymore. I don't think anybody in this audience is a doubter anymore. To many of you listeners, this may be your first hearing of real jazz, and if it has a strange sound, it is no wonder, because jazz is basically different from other music. In its pure form, as here, unhybridized, uncorrupted, uncommercialized, it is American Negro folk music, and yet it greatly transcends its humble origins. Measured in itself, and apart even from its influence on serious composers, it is a great and significant art form, and this fact most certainly will come to be recognized. Now, how is it different? That's best told by what to listen for and what not to listen for in jazz music. First, good band instrumentation, five to eight pieces, consisting of trumpet, clarinet, trombone, piano, guitar, drums, and bass. No symphonic setup and no violins. Second, good jazz tunes, rags, blues, and stomps, and very rarely the song hit of the moment. Third, good jazz tone, which is vocalized and human-like in quality, not pure classical tone, and a good, clear, brassy sound to the whole band. Fourth, a steady basic rhythm, and superimposed over this, amazing rhythmic complexities of syncopation and polyrhythm, and no variation in tempo. Fifth, with all of the rhythmic urgency, paradoxically still a feeling of the most complete relaxation. Sixth, collective improvisation. That's the simultaneous playing of several independent melodic inventions. These inventions are in rhythm, in tone, and in melody. They require great musicians like you're hearing to play them at all. Now, if you hear all of these things as you have been hearing them now, then you are hearing pure, hot jazz and unique American music which, while not serious music, most definitely is a music to be taken seriously. I hope you share my pleasure and pride in it, and most of all, I hope that you share my hope that young musicians all over the country may learn to play it once more and that it may be played everywhere again. And now I turn the microphone back to your able commentator, Clancy Hayes. Thank you, Rudy. This is Clancy Hayes. I think you hear me once in a while, quite often on the Blue Network, and I'm certainly not posing as an authority on jazz, but in truth, somewhat starry-eyed and gapy-mouthed at what's going on all around me, because this is jazz, and of course, I'm only the carrier way of bringing it to you. Well, certainly no program such as this would be complete without a rejuvenation of a Jelly Roll Morton tune, one of the trio type, such as Wolverine Blues, now to be performed by Bertha Gonsolin at the piano, pupil and successor to Morton, Wade Whaley, former New Orleans band leader and clarinetist, and Everett Walsh, equally noted New Orleans drummer. We give you the Wolverine Blues.
It seems that that trio turned into a five-piece group with Ed Garland on bass and Frank Paisley on the guitar. Rudy Blaish and San Francisco's Museum of Art searched wide and far for this lady known as Bertha Gonsolin. To the real American jazz fanciers, she was number one jazz pianist. Once a famous ragtime pianist who studied with Jelly Roll Morton and played with King Oliver's band, she was discovered living right here in San Francisco. So here she is, Bertha Gonsolin, with her jazz piano solo, The Pearls. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, this is Jazz, a concert from San Francisco by eight of the final famous musicians from the era of original Negro jazz music. And the next and final presentation of this specially collected group of old-time jazz men is Dippermouth Blues, named for Louis Armstrong, who was in those days known as Dippermouth. Listen to this famous King Oliver number with its celebrated trumpet choruses by Papa Mutt Carey and the famous Willie Bunk Johnson. Yes, sir, this is Jazz.
have just heard This Is Jazz, the most unusual concert of honest-to-goodness jazz music played by the few remaining members of New Orleans' original jazz bands. Among them are the famous Bunk Johnson, daddy of all New Orleans trumpeters, now 63 years old. Papa Mutt Carey, another famous New Orleans trumpet player. Edward Kidori, great tailgate trombonist, Bertha Gonsolin, Wade Whaley, Buster Wilson, Frank Paisley, Edward Garland, and Everett Walsh. Your narrator was Clancy Hayes. This is Jazz. This comes to you from San Francisco, written and produced by Watson Humphrey. This is Marvin Graham speaking from San Francisco.